wanted to think a little bit. You know, the founders talked about in the con in the Declaration of Independence the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I mean, we're not entitled to happiness, which is, after all, a bit vague, but we're entitled to pursue it. And we have a right to life and liberty. And the assumption is that if we have life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness as, as rights, then we make decisions and we, we kind of have to live by a lot of these decisions. Now, you say, well, what happens if somebody runs into all sorts of trouble? Are they just completely out of the picture? Well, you know, uh, we have charity. The founders always believed that charity for worthy people, churches, of course, historically have played a big role in this because churches can do a lot of one-on-one -on -one training. And after all, it's Paul in the Bible in Thessalonians that says, if any would not work, neither should he eat. You know, the, the idea is that we, we ought to have productive people, but at the same time, there, there are provisions for charity. And we see this with Jesus and with Paul. And we saw it, I, I touched on Grover Cleveland in the 1800s, when we had that business with the farmers in Texas, uh, who had a poor crop one year. And so Congress, they had their congressman came in and said, help me get a subsidy for my farmers, because they had a bad crop because of bad climate. And so he says, if you'll vote for my subsidy, you know, we're getting into this, the, what we call pork barrel politics. I'll vote for your tariff and this kind of thing. And so we ended up getting Congress passing a $10,000 subsidy. It was primarily for seeds for the farmers, but $10,000 for that district in Texas. And so Grover Cleveland has this bill before him, and everybody says, don't you want the, to help the poor? And it was a bad climate. It was beyond their control. Let's help the poor. And he vetoed it. <laughs> and you know, you think, well, that isn't very astute politically. But Cleveland came in there in the, in the 1880s, and he said, hey, 100 years ago, our founders uh, not only wrote a Declaration of Independence, but they gave us a constitution. And it, it didn't have anything in there about federal funding for, for groups, I mean, for voter blocks, for goodness sakes. And he said, I'm vetoing it because nobody can show me anywhere in the Constitution where this fits. So he vetoed it, and then he said, however, when people are in need, it is the job of Americans who have a little extra to try to help. And he said, I'd like to help with these farmers, and he made a contribution. He didn't really make it public. He said, I'm making one, but the trouble is this is not a game of look at me and look how much I'm giving. Private uh, charity ought to be have a certain privacy, but I just want you to know that I'm giving something to help these farmers, and I hope others will too, because I believe that they were caught with a bad climate and they didn't get a, a crop in, and that to me is worthy of a, some charitable help. Well, it turns out other newspapers picked up the cause, and whereas the federal bill that Cleveland vetoed was for ten thousand dollars. We had in federal aid, or we had in private charity, a hundred thousand that came in, and Cleveland ended up saying, "This is the way Americans solve problems. It separates Americans from other people, but we believe it's it's a rather biblical way to do it, and it's a very sensible. Regardless, it's a very economically sensible way to handle charity."